Hello and welcome to the Easy Solution Systems tutorial videos. I'm Jesse Brown and today we will be going through invoicing in Retail Man. Firstly, we need to go into Maintenance and then choose System Setup and choose the Sales tab. Here on the left, we have the invoice screen set up. Here we want to have the prices inclusive of tax. This option can also be applied to the clients and items. This is by default ticked and these are mainly for the cash sales. You can also force or allow other options and you can go through them and choose as you'd like. You can choose here to do the default quantity value. Um, the default is set to one. This means that when you apply an item, um, the value will be one. If you choose to put through an item and let's say it has two, every time you choose the item, it will add two to the item quantity. You can also set the decimals for the quantity, discounts and tax. For the invoice printout, this section will configure the grid in the invoice screen and also for the printout. So if you would like, you can have the back order column on both the screen and the printout if you would like, as well as the discount columns, tax code, tax amount and the tax total. You can choose as you would like. Something else to note here, for the report format file name, if you leave this blank, it'll use a file called invoice.frx as a default. Some people may want to customize their own format file. They can choose to do that themselves. Otherwise, um, Easy Solution can do that for a small fee. We also have invoice files that will include the QR code. So to do this, we input the invoice QR.frx. So once you have this, you'll be able to see the QR code in the top right corner of the invoice. So the invoice screen has the invoice quote, lay by returns and RMA. So in invoice title, you can also choose to name the title of these headers. So for example, if you want the, the tax invoice to have the title as tax invoice, in invoice title, you'll write tax invoice. But for now, we're gonna have it as invoice. Copies to print would just default as one. You may want to have two, maybe for yourself. It's up to you. And of course, print as receipt, either off or on. You also have the invoice message, which will appear at the bottom of the screen for the invoice. Um, you can choose to have whatever you would like in there. So the QR code is based on the text written in here. So this text has to be valid. So if you scan it and it's not valid, it will say error and won't work. Here I have written www.easysolution.com in quotes. So this means when you scan the QR code with your phone, the website will appear in the scan and you can choose to open that up. So you may have scans that will lead people to special websites that you've set up for discounts and so forth. So once you've done that, we're gonna to go to save we're going to sales and then choosing invoicing. So notice here the tab defaults to the invoice. You can make it default to um, any of the other tabs from the screen that we're just on in the setup. But for now we're gonna have it as invoice. So here you can see we have invoice, quotations, lay by, credit note, consignment out and RMA. We're going to choose invoice. So here in the client details section, we can either type in the part number, the client name, the client phone number or client mobile number. If you are unsure, you can press enter in the second box and the list will appear and then you can choose to search in the box. Otherwise you can double click in the box to bring up the client list. As you can see in the top right, there is a sequence number. It will start from one and um, as you have more sales, the entries will increase. If you would like to override the last invoice number, 
You can type in a number, we're going to put in 1000. Here the system will warn you, saying that you're entering an out of sequence number. So once you choose to accept that, if you do, the next invoice number will be 1001. So it's probably better not to jump the sequence numbers unless you really want to. It could make a mess of your sequence numbers if you do so though. If you do accidentally choose to accept it and you didn't want to, you'll have to go to the entries and delete them um, in order to fix your sequence. If you need to, notice that you can change the position and the columns expanding and shrinking if you would like to. Once you've closed and re-enter, the columns will have saved those lengths so you can choose your own spacing that you're happy with. As you can see here we have tax inclusive. You can choose to tick or untick that. If you were to untick it, um, when you enter an item there will be no tax on the item. So here we're going to tick it. Also note that the items will need to have the taxes set up on them which you will have to edit in the stock settings. All items can be saved, printed, emailed, deleted or paid from these buttons. Here you have the option for source. Source can be applied to a customer um, who is either new or a continuing customer. You can also force the user to choose the salesperson and a reference number in order to do the invoicing. If you would like to set up a backdated invoice, um, you can choose to do that. It needs to be activated through the maintenance and setup section. So let's put in the client's details and then we're going to put in some items. We'll have to put some amounts in as these are not set up at the moment. And as you can see, one item is taxed but the other one isn't. You can either put in exemption so it is therefore exempt from tax or taxed and this depends on whether you've set up your um, tax settings you'll need to go and do that in order for this to work if you notice the number in the top right hand corner it says zero but once you save it it'll take the last number plus one so we're going to save this one So next we can also do quotations, it's the same process as the invoice. We can email that quote, save it or print it. We're going to save it. If the client wants to come back and get this quotation, all we have to do is press F7 and you'll see the invoice list. We see that quotation and we're going to select it. Now we can change it into copy as invoice. So once you have saved a sale, if you go back into invoice list and choose one, you'll notice that there will be copies for the usual options under the tab. So we're going to choose copy as invoice. Notice that it changes the number to zero. So we're going to press enter and enter. So it's going to do the previous number plus one and you can process this as a sale. If you want to view a PDF version of the invoice, you need to right click on the save button and the default place for this to be saved is under the C drive in the temp folder. Notice that the QR code has appeared on the screen and it has saved the invoice as a PDF file. And the file has been saved as a PDF into the temp folder. So we're going to go to the temp folder here under C and temp. And here we can see that the invoice is in the folder. So once everything has been fully paid, you can choose to lock the invoice. You can also import from external files. So if you would like to import a file for a client, it can be imported as a CSV or Excel file. You can also print labels from within the invoice directly from this button. You can also search for item details by pressing F10 or clicking on this button. You can also do a part number search by pressing F9 or clicking this button. You can also search for serial numbers and of course F7 to look at the past invoices or clicking this button. Here as you can see where it says days, 
365. This is showing you the past invoices over 365 days or the past year. But if you would like, you can um, set it to a different default rather than one year. You can choose to do 30 days. So what we're going to do is type in 30 and then we're going to right click. Here you are asked if you would like to set this as the default. We're going to choose yes. So if we close and then reopen again, here you can see it is set to 30 days. If you would like to see certain invoices from a certain client, you need to bring up the client's details and then press F7 or the invoice list button. And this will filter the client's past invoices within this range of days. You can also filter by outstanding or paid. You can also print a delivery for that invoice. You can also view the payments and choose to email, print the invoice, or you can choose to bring it back to the invoice screen so that you can either choose to modify or delete the invoice. We hope this video has been helpful. Thank you very much for watching. We hope to see you again soon. Bye.